you want to record. Thank you. So I want to thank everybody for coming today. Um, if you are preparing yourself to listen to the lecture on achieving greatness, how to prepare for greatness, then you're in the right place. <laughs> if not, maybe you landed here anyways. Um, so I know that this is a video that's going to be watched, you know, by different people and different time zones and in different countries. But what I'm going to share with you is pretty well basic classic information on how to go from one step to the other. And that's a really big part of what I do at DevDormand is really um, help and support people to go from one, you know, one place in their life to another place in your life and everything that happens in between. So my work is really mostly around health and wellness and personal development. And if you don't know who I am, I've been in that field for over 30 years. Um, and you can just go to the website. So if you're not familiar and you want to be able to find out the lectures that we're doing, please go to debdrummond.com and sign up for the newsletter. And what happens is you will, I don't inundate you with a whole lot of emails, but what you do get is you get one email with my events for the month. So whether I'm speaking, either that's live or whether I'm speaking in something like a lecture like this that you can attend to. Um, and there's complimentary lectures and then there's lectures that have a fee attached to them, but you can go and just sign up for that newsletter and you will get a nice health and wellness email once a month telling you where I am, what I'm doing, and if there's anything new that you need to know about in the world of health and wellness. So again, thanks for spending some time together. We're gonna to probably be about 30 or 35 minutes. And then if anyone has any questions, feel free to go to, again, devdroman.com, or, and you can just email me through there, or dev at devdroman.com, or I am a text person. I have no problem giving my text number out. You just need to tell me who you are and where you're coming in from. And it's 604-655-4698. And you can text me your questions, or if you want to set up a time to have a conversation. So I always like to take notes. Um, I've changed, I've done these lectures for a long time but I have changed some of the material due to the different uh, things that are going on in the world. And right now, as I'm doing this lecture, there's been a bit of a world shift. <laughs> there's been a bit of a world shift. In relationship to um, preparing for greatness, preparing for greatness. So if you're attracted to this lecture right now in your time, you know, this time it tells me that you are looking to go to a new level or you're looking at the idea of going to a new level. And what greatness means to you is what greatness means to you. Predominantly, when I do lectures, I'm usually asked to do them in the business sector. And so predominantly, this I'm gonna be talking about things to prepare that next phase of who you are in your business or where you're moving to in your career. You may not be self-employed, you might be working for another company, um, but whenever you prepare for a state of greatness, there's multi, it gets multifaceted because whether you're working for someone else or you're working for yourself, if you notice there's kind of the word in there is you. And so you preparing yourself for greatness, no matter where you're at, all comes back down to you, right? It might, you might be listening to this lecture because you have a yearning for the next level, but you don't really know where, where that's gonna come from or what that looks like or you may be very far in your personal journey and you may be actually moving along to a level of greatness, whatever that looks like for you on purpose. And when you can make that decision and be on purpose, that's your strongest position, right? That's your strongest position. And so you may have an inkling and that's why you're here. And what I wanna do is I wanna give you the information and I wanna give you platform to be able to examine the arenas that's gonna help you make get yourself to greatness that much quicker, that much better, right? And if you've been to all my lectures before, you know I'm by nature kind of blunt. Um, and you know, uh, people tell me that I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a Janice Joplin speaker. I love that name because I just think, you know, that was just a woman who just kind of told it what it is. And I think when you're going for greatness, it really is that shake up time. It's that time where you're like, you wanna get there, and you want to get there as quick as possible. So one of the things that I want to talk about is when you go towards something that is greater from where you are, you're actually looking to change and shift not only your mindset, um, but how you do things now. So where you are now is probably very different from where how you did things maybe a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, or again, you might be at the very beginning. 
but what it is is you want something new. That means that you're going to have to take that concept of new and you're going to have to apply it into your life, which inevitably, inevitably means that you need to stop doing things that you're probably doing, right? You're not going to stop so much as you are going to change. So there's things in your life that are going to move. And, and there's a big saying in the world of on your way to greatness. And it's right. You need to change your energy. You need to change your state. So it's going to be an exploratory conversation with yourself. I'm a big, I'm kind of, I'm just going to show you here. Um, so I drew a big circle on the page, right? And so as I'm talking, you might want to put things in that circle or just when I get off, the, when we get off and talking today, you want to be able to draw down a circle. And I call this, it's kind of like, it's kind of brain, it's a brain purge. What do you need to do to get to the next level of greatness and the things that you need to change? So as I'm talking, you can kind of put it in there. You can also use this as what it is that you're, what it is that you're looking to achieve. This, this is a place where you just dump, take everything from your brain and put it into that circle. Maybe you're at a stage where you want to start a new business. Maybe you want to do something on the side. Maybe you want to, whatever it is that you want to achieve in your greatness. Maybe it's a sports goal. Maybe it's a health goal. You know, maybe it's a personal relationship goal, but what you got to do is you got to take everything that's going on in your head and you got to put it somewhere. And really there is something very powerful about a pen and paper. I know that we're moving further and further away from pen and paper. And it actually is quite sad because when you actually write things out, like the actual idea of journaling, instead of, you know, texting to yourself or audioing to yourself is there's a lot of power that happens in a pen and paper. Not only does your brain retain more, but you actually dump more because you can actually start to fill in words, right? And so some people will do, you know, bullet point, right? Mindset, organize, systems, you know, talk to, what to read, but actually start to dig in there and to start to write and just dump everything from your brain of where you are now. The most important step that you have into moving to the next step is appreciating where you are and giving yourself a pat on the back or a sense of, I don't care, go buy yourself some flowers, go buy yourself something that you haven't bought yourself and just acknowledge where you are, even if it's an, if it's an uncomfortable state, even if it's an uncomfortable state. So there's something about, I'm so happy and I'm so grateful that I am where I am, but I want more. I want different. I want to move myself to that next level. And so having a sense of gratitude, because if not, it can get a little self-defeating because some of us, if you're reaching out and you're looking to listen to this kind of information, you may not be where you want to be. And that doesn't feel really good. But what you don't recognize is that there was a time before this at whatever stage, it could have been 10 years ago. I don't know, but there was a stage where you weren't even where you were at now. You weren't in this great place now. Now, some of you, I can hear you. I can hear you. You're like, yeah, I was in a better place. <laughs> right? You know, if you were in a relationship and now you're not, or you were making more money and now you're not, that's not true. That's not true. Who you are in the state of wisdom that you have, inevitably, there is an area in your life, if you kind of go in with a microscope, that you are better, bigger, and smarter than you were five years ago. Even if you're not in the best place that you want to be financially, whatever, whatever. And if you are saying to yourself, yeah, well, I'm not where I want to be yet. I'm not where I want to be yet. I'm not where I want to be yet. Well, that's why you're listening on this, phone, this, on this call or not this call on this, on this lecture. That's why you stepped into this lecture because maybe you're not really overly comfortable where you are, or maybe you are, and you are in a preparation stage. Now, isn't that a glorious place to be when you can see that you want to go somewhere and you're not in a state of uncomfortableness. Mm, that's, that's, mm, that's good stuff. It means that you're on a progression of personal development and you've gone along this journey long enough to know that you don't have to wait until you're in pain to make change. Even though two, the two things that make people change the most in the world are pleasure and pain. They're the biggest motivators in the world, pleasure and pain. And this class is not about that going down that road, but wouldn't it be wonderful if you're sitting here today and you're like, wow, I'm really, I'm, I'm quite happy where I am and I'm in a knowingness that I want to go to the next level. And there isn't something like this huge, you know, trauma that's taking you to this place. You're just in a state of wanting to know how to go to the next level. So if you, on how to prepare for greatness, 
one of the, which is a very bold statement, by the way, it's a very bold statement. When you start to say, I want to go to the next level, when you start talking those words, when you start writing this stuff down, you're sending a message to the cosmos, right? You're sending a message to the cosmos. You're starting to shift. And what I want to do is support you in what that shift looks like. So when you want to go to that next level, examining where you are is very important. And like I said, I'm going to be a little Janis Joplin here. There's things that you're going to need to stop doing or people that you're going to need to stop talking to or books that you're going to need to stop reading or, 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 because inevitably there's probably behavior in the place that you are now that's very comforting or has gotten you to where you are and you need to shift and where and go to where you need to go, which means that there has to be some kind of change. And so this is very, how can I put it? I'm not sure if this is a holistic principle because it's a very practical grassroots principle. But when you're preparing for change, I want to give you a metaphor. And not only do I want to give you a metaphor, I really want you to put this into practice. So the metaphor, I want you to imagine, now some of you are visual and some of you are not. Some of you are visual, you're going to get this and see this in your, you know, kind of in your mind's eye. And if not, you guys are just going to have to follow along with me if you don't. But imagine, imagine that right now you have a blazer hanging in your closet. And that blazer, that jacket that you wear 90% of the time, because let's face it, we wear my girlfriend, Rowena List. She's an amazing organizer. She tells me all the time, you wear 80, you wear 20% of your clothes. 80% are those kind of things that you occasionally wear. 20% is the stuff that you know that you love, that you look good in, that every time you put on, you're like, ooh, this fits, this looks good. So I want you to imagine your best jacket, right? And you've been wearing that jacket for a while. And that jacket is exactly where you are right now. That's the jacket that I wore yesterday. You know, that I'm, you know, like that's what I wore yesterday. And so what I want you to imagine is that you're going to go buy a whole new set of clothes. You're going to go buy a new dress jacket. You're going to go buy a new, I don't care if it's shoes or a purse or whatever represents you going to that next level. And I'm probably talking a little bit more on the business side here because predominantly that's, that's where, that's, that's kind of my tribe, people that are looking to go to the next level in their business. And so what I want you to do is I want you to look at that jacket like it's done and it's over. You're going to put that in a bag, you're going to put that in a box, and you're going to donate that to someone that needs to go to the level that you're choosing to leave. So I want that, I want you to land that. I want you to take where whatever it is, that jacket, whatever you wear, and whatever you wear, it's your belief systems, it's where you're at right now. I want you to take off that jacket and I want you to pack it nicely because it's been good to you. And I want you to put it in a box or a bag and I want you to donate that to someone who wants where you are now because there's always people, you know, as much as we are looking forward and we're like, wow, I really want that, there's people that are looking at you. There's people that are looking at you and go, I wish I had that. I can't wait till I get there. Right? So when I say that you're really preparing for greatness, you need to take that off. Now I take people when I personally coach people and I do one-on-ones with people, I literally will get them to go through their closet and like, okay, it's purge time. It is purge time. What is part of your past? What have you worn over and over and over and over and over again? So literally the metaphor of going through your closet, your shoes, your blazers, your purses, your accessories, your watches, your jewelry, it's something that's very personal and close to you and getting rid of it and making room for new is critical. And I've done this with so many people I can't tell you and I do it with myself. Whenever I'm ready to go to the next level, even if I've just cleaned it out and I clean my you know, my stuff up quite often because I like to go to the next level as often as I can. I remember getting rid of favorite blazers. I'm like, oh my gosh, that looks so good on me. And I went and bought another one. I went and bought, a, this is my new level blazer. This is my new level blazer. This is my new level business dress, right? And I, for me, I love dresses as you can see. And um, I like to go get new dresses. I'm like, ooh, that's the one. That's the one. I'm going to wear that. I feel good in that. And so getting rid of the old, symbolically, it's a major game changer. Symbolically, it's a major game changer, okay? 
So you can also walk around your home. What no longer serves you? Like, what is it that you can donate and get rid of? Cleaning your space. Now I'll tell you, if you're looking at doing something, a shift in your business, you need to change your office. I don't care if it's, you, I don't care if it's just rearranging and moving. I don't care but it's really changing your office. I like to use things like aromatherapy when I'm cleaning things like that. And I'll use oils that are really good for shifting and shifting energy and cleansing and clearing and moving. And so lemon and grapefruit and lime myrtle oil, those four are my favorite when I'm doing shifting and clearing. And for some people, this might sound really holistic. You're like, I didn't get on to learn how to clean my office, but I'm telling you it's about shifting energy. That's what it is. Cause I'm super like where I am in my career, where I am in my business right now, it is enabling me to do some pretty cool stuff. I got to tell you, I wanted to be where I am and I'm choosing to go to the next level. So what did I do? I've got it on my list to rearrange my office again. And I just took, you know, these products that I, I work with, I took them from one part of my house and I moved and I made a beautiful display here on my desk. I put a beautiful picture of my son at four months old pouting because he didn't want his picture taken. You know, I put some awards here and I look at this. It's a new energy. It's a new time. Change things around, different colors, whatever. I actually have a lamp in my office and I, I have two lamp shades for the same lamp. Right now it's red and sometimes I change it to purple. Okay. So you really do need to change your environment. It's just an energetic way to go, I'm going to the next level, whatever that looks like for you. Go buy yourself something or something iconic, right? Okay, so that is the preparing for greatness. And that sounds like a lot of fun, right? Oh my gosh, she just told me I, I get to go shopping and I need to get rid of things. And that is the external. But now here, I'm gonna take you a little bit deeper. And this part, you may not love so much. Who really in your life have you been going to for support that really you need to spend a little bit less time with. Just in this sector, just in this sector. It could be someone, it could be a really close friend. You know, and I'm pretty transparent when I share no matter what. I remember when I was making the big change, there was a very big change. And some of you that are listening to this are, are in preparation of a very big change. This could be the very first time that you've made this decision. And I remember now, if you know me at all, or you follow my stuff, you know, I absolutely love music. I mean, there isn't anything that makes me happier than music. And I'm talking any kind of music. I mean, I'm I mean, most people don't know how much I love opera. I, I will listen to opera any time of day. Okay. But there was a time. And so I managed nightclubs. I had the time of my life. Some of the best years and memories, probably when I'm on that final stage, when they're going to kind of throw the, you know, they're like, okay, she's gone, put up the, you know, put up the screen. Some of my best memories will be those days of just, you know, foot loose and fancy free. Right. But, you know, working in a, working in a nightclub, I, I lived a nocturnal life. You know, my day got started around midnight, <laughs> right? It was a very family feeling. We all lived that family feeling that there was a day that I looked around and I thought, this is not where I want to go. I don't in five years from now want to be sitting on a bar stool saying, I wish I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. And the, the place of where I was going to in my personal and business development wasn't matching necessarily the tribe or some of that tribe because they weren't on the same page. Now it doesn't mean they weren't fantastic people. They're in my life to this day, but I had to step away for a while go build the life that I was yearning to live. Not because I was better than, not because I was, you know, didn't, didn't respect that or didn't, I have the utmost respect. Look, some of my friends right now, I go visit a friend of mine right now. Now look at, I'm mid fifties. I used to do this early twenties. We're talking 30 years ago. One of my best buddies is still a bartender and I go sit down and I go to the Roxy and I have the best time ever. And I go there and we chat and we this, I don't, it doesn't matter to me what people do. Didn't matter to me. But for me at that time in my life, I needed to take a break from that tribe to go build my tribe. And so you may be at a stage in your life right now where for you to go to the next level, you got to exit stage left a little bit. And all I can tell you is it's going to take courage and um, it may not be received well, but you got to follow that path. You got to follow that path. And so, um, it could be something more subtle. It could be someone that 
is kind of happy for you, but not. You need to just make sure that we're, when you're going on this journey, you grab the one or half of one or one and a half or two people around you, even if they're just books. You know, one of the best, one of the books that, that changed my life was written by Shakti Gaiwan, Living in the Light. And I remember reading it on a bus, at the back of the bus, you know, in my early 20s, going, wow, life changing. And I felt like I had a friend with Shakti Gaiwan. I'm like, you're talking my, you're talking my world. No one else in my world, it just wasn't where I came from, was talking that kind of language. It's very holistic. Um, and, and so I, for the longest time, you know, my, my accountability partners in life, my business partners in life were books, you know, Napoleon Hill. I've read that book seven times. And so I took, you know, I created a, a, a circle of business coaches and personal development coaches of people that were authors, right? Because I didn't have the, the financial means at that time in my life to go hire a coach. And I didn't even know that's what you were supposed to do 30 years ago. Now it's a whole different world, right? But who knew? So I had to let some situations, some people go. I had to say no to certain invitations. And I really chose to go all in. When you're going to that next level of greatness, it tends to require a 100% commitment from you. And so as much as that may be difficult, um, it's by nature, the people that I know that have gone to the next level, 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 are looking for someone or something that they can resonate or hook into that is also going in that direction. It may mean that you need to leave this aside for a while or not go to this person to support you. Or, and here's even better yet, don't expect it from people. Like, don't get disappointed if, you know, take the responsibility. If you're going to people that are not walking your same path and expecting them to support you 100% and then getting disappointed in them that they don't, that's on you. Like, that's on you, right? Don't expect things from people that can't give it. That's on you, right? And so, you know, as hard as it is for you, because it's a lot easier to hope everyone in your world goes with you. Oh, wouldn't that be great? That's not the truth. So don't get disappointed at them because you've chosen a different path. That's not fair. So let them be where they are. They may come along your journey. They may not come along your journey. Things may change in verse. I mean, I've got people that have been in my life for 40 years. We didn't walk the same path. We had something in common and there was times where we didn't talk for a long time because we were both doing our thing. So be respectful, be grateful. You're choosing a new life, not them which means that you're gonna to have to make some changes and you're gonna to have to have some courage because that's gonna take courage and then you're gonna to have to reach out to different people or read different books or go, go in a different direction for a while. Nothing's better, less, I'm this, I'm that, they need to, that's not necessary, right? Not necessary. So I wanna make sure that I do that. So it might feel a little lonely. It might feel lonely going to the next level. It might be you and you. <laughs> it might just be you and you, right? I remember talking to, um, you, you'll hear that saying, it's kind of lonely at the top. It's kind of lonely at the top. It doesn't have to be lonely at the top so much if you hang out with people that are there, but also the process of going there may feel like a continuum of letting go, right? So just letting go of the old. Now, one of the things that for sure that you're going to need is you're going to need systems to go to the next level. And so preparing yourself for systems and, and in that process, so you just heard me talk about what was my system for my personal development? Well, it was books and it was coaches, right? I've been a huge believer and I'm a true believer in coaching, you know, finding that person, whether it's a personal therapist, whether it's a business coach, you know, I've had business coaches since I've been in my 20s you know, and also it's okay to let that business coach go when you feel like there's everything and anything that you've ever received from that coach and you need to move on or you're moving in a different direction. So that's one of the things that I'd be putting down in my brain purge would be, you know, um, who's going to be my coach? Who's going to take me to that next level? Who's going to lock arms with me? Who's going to know what I'm doing and support me from the sidelines, right? And one of the things that, oh, I just heard it, Oh, yes, I did. I just heard someone say, yeah, but I can't afford it. Yeah, you can. You'll find a way. You'll have a garage sale if you need to, right? So, oh, I can't afford it. Well, what I want to, I want to tell you that, that that wasn't my voice. That was someone else's voice. And that's what I want you to start to capture. And I want to talk about that right now, self-defeating thoughts. So as you're going from one level to another, 
the biggest gift that you could ever pray for is the ability to hear your own messaging. It's, it's being self-observant. So listen to what yourself is telling yourself and cut that stuff off and write it down. And that's the stuff you take to your coach. That's the stuff you take to your one-on-one. -on -one. Wow, I was really going to this next level and this is what I heard about myself. This is what I heard myself saying to myself. In that, just that system alone, being able to catch yourself, if you can get to a stage, and you all can get to that place of self-observation. So put that down, it's not self-discovery, it's actually self-observation. Being able to stand outside of yourself, watch yourself, listen to yourself. Sometimes I'll tell you, here's a prime example. Here's a prime example. I have to, let's say I have to do something that's going to be really um, close to my heart, you know, some personal development. Um, I remember, I'm going to use an example. So uh, I was in my 20s and I was in that process that I was telling you about, about letting go of my old world, you know, a nightclub scene and being up all night and staying up late and getting home at eight o'clock in the morning and the dysfunction of that, right? And I was going into this new world, right? Oh, I'd gotten this day job. You know, some of my friends back then said to me, who do you think you are? Like, oh, you think you're better than us now? I, I literally, my worst fears came true. And they said, oh, so what? You're like too good for us now? I had to go through that. I'm like, no, just a little different, right? So when you break away, you're going to have people that you're going to reflect to them what they're not doing inside. And they're going to tell you right to your face, right? They're going to go, oh, look at you. Look at you go now. Look at you, girl. And um, you're like, hmm. You know, just, mm, thank you, <laughs> right? So, so you're moving to a new direction. So I was doing that. And um, I, was, I was working at a, at a late night restaurant because well, there's music, right? So I went from working you know, in a club to working to this restaurant and I'm managing and I'm loving it and I'm being in service and I'm enjoying it. And then um, I had someone suggest to me and it felt right, some really cool personal development work. And they're like, oh man, you can work through so much stuff. And, and it, was a, it was a treatment. It was a specific therapy treatment called rebirthing. And it, it's a place where you can just go and you breathe and you move through your stuff and you come out and you feel elated and you're oxygenated. But my psyche knew, my psyche knew that it was almost like a form of therapy, right? You just move through all this stuff. You're just breathing. It's no big deal. But this woman's helping you move from one to another and you're, you're shifting. Now, I'm not sitting on here telling you, you all have to go rebirth, but I'm telling you, when I first started, there was a part of me that I'm like, I want that. I want that freedom that people talk about from old behaviors and old ways of thinking and moving through. And I want to heal the stuff that I've experienced in my life that needs healing. And that's what it does. And I went to my first session and I was super excited and I came out and I felt Wow, it was super powerful, but I knew it had been really deep work for me, but I had bought a package. <laughs> it was less expensive to buy a package. Do you think I wanted to go back to my second appointment? Heck no. Heck no. Because it was like going to a therapy session. I was like, wow, this is really deep work. It was moving me. It was changing my belief systems and I was going to this next level. And we were talking after about things that were bothering me on the inside and you know, I was talking about things I'd never shared about before. I didn't want to go. So you know what? I would watch myself want to cancel the appointment from the time I woke up in the morning. I'm like, well, maybe I can just cancel it. That's a voice. Well, I could move it. I could move it maybe till tomorrow afternoon. I wonder if she would be available tomorrow afternoon. Or, um, you know what? I'm not feeling so well. Or I'd start cleaning. That'd be my thing. I started to clean. I always use the example, oh, my stove needs cleaning. Cleaning, I can't go. And at least I was conscious enough to know what I was doing. And I had to force myself with everything I could. She lived really far away. I had to take a bus. It was an hour there. I mean, I have lots of really good justifiable excuses. And then I had to force it to the point where I said to her, if I call to cancel, don't let me. To the point that I actually prepaid for my appointments just to get me there because I knew it was a difficult thing. So I'm sharing that transparent story with you. I did that, I was about 27 years old. Um, I, I'm sharing that with you because that's the stuff that our um, old self wants to do. Our old self wants to keep us where we are because it's comfortable and it doesn't require very much pain or energy or effort, right? It kind of keeps you stuck. 
Um, so that's the kind of stuff that you want to write down in this brain purge. What am I saying to myself? What am I saying to myself? What am I saying to myself? Which is why I'm a true believer in getting coaching. And also if you have some stuff that you need to deal with, I'm a big believer in doing, you know, in, in hiring personal development, you know, a personal development coaches, they're a therapist. <laughs> there's business coaches, there's personal development coaches. I see someone who's an emotional intelligent coach. I love our conversations. I feel so much smarter. They give me a sense of emotional intelligence about things happening in my life. I love it. So being aware of yourself, being self-observant means you're going to have to shift. You're going to have to move. You're going to have to leave things. So go buy yourself a new blazer. Go buy yourself some new shoes. Go buy yourself a new watch. I don't know. Leave the past behind and move to that next place. And so um, systems. So that would be some of your personal systems. And the other systems really are, what is it going to take for you to get to that next place? We talked a little bit about changing your office, but when you are looking at a place of going to a next level, what does that growth look like? And what is the infrastructure that you need for that growth? Okay. So if you're looking at that infrastructure, and I've written some down, some things down here for people to just note. So what is your time management? If you're going to bring growth or go to the next level in your life in that area, is it going to require more time from you? And where is that time going to come from? Because you have 24 hours a day and so does, you know, so does our premier in our country. And so does your favorite singer. And so does some of your favorite authors. We all have the same time. And when they're dedicated to working on a project, where's that time going to come from? It's one of the things that I learned that was just, probably the most beautiful thing ever. And I remember reading the book of a really powerful woman who was um, the pioneer in direct sales and um, her name was Mary Kay Ash. And I remember reading her book and talking and she was talking about how she was time managing herself and how she chose to get up at five o'clock in the morning because that, was, that enabled her to be able to accomplish the goal that she had set out, which was a pretty serious lofty goal and how she time managed her relationship and how she take, took a look at all the things that she was doing in her life, including cleaning her house and everything that she could farm out. I could farm out having someone clean her house. She could farm out. I, I remember me when I hired my first assistant, I was a single mom of two kids and people are like, what are you doing? Why do you have an assistant? And I remember saying to them, you know what? Um, I'm, I'm a single parent. Um, I, you know, my son comes over every Tuesday. I can either drag a six-year-old through the grocery store. Mm, isn't that fun? Or I can make our dinner at home instead of going to a dinner or a movie. And I can pay this assistant 30 bucks to go get my groceries for me and take it home. So it wasn't about, it was changing. It, it enabled me to do the time that I wanted with my son, get rid of something off my list that I no longer wanted to do. Being willing to tell myself it's crap when I tell myself I can't afford it. Because that's just, that's just one of those things that we tell ourselves so that we can stay where we are, by the way. Because you can always find means. And then making that choice. Awesome. I don't go grocery shopping anymore. She actually shows it up and puts it in my fridge. How friggin' amazing is that? And she bills me and she does her grocery shopping at the same time. She's happy. I get my job. I hang out with my son. I've made time for my son. And then I can go and spend my time building on or moving to this next level of my life that I want to go to. You know, I can get up 20 minutes earlier. I can go to bed 20 minutes later. You know, all that stuff, mastering the minute. So you need to take a look at your time management if you want to go. What is it that's required of you? Do you need to make extra time? And what is it in your schedule that you're doing that really isn't taking you to what you can do that you need to shut down on? So you know what? Maybe it's like, oh, you know, I, like, I, I meditate twice a day. Well, med maybe you meditate once a day. People are like, oh, you're telling people not to meditate? No, I'm telling people to make a, make a list and pick. Pick it. What do you want to do? You know, it's the same 24 hours that if you want to keep meditating twice a day and add an hour to your business, get up an hour earlier, get up a half an hour earlier, go to bed a half an hour earlier. Take a look at your internal time management systems and watch how long it takes to do something. Can you do it quicker? Can you do it faster? Can you bring it down or can you take something out of your life? Right? So for example, I was like, Hmm, I want to take my business to the next level. I was talking about a business thing and I thought, what can I do? So I got a, a home machine to do some exercise and I can listen to some training classes while I'm on there. I started to layer, you know, layering within my time management system. So take a look at your time management. That may, that mean that may, that may require you to have to talk to somebody or you may, you know, 
someone may have to get some extra babysitting or talk to their partner about taking, you know, sharing something over here or, you know, yeah, wow. If I, if I actually take a, you know, get, get someone to watch the kids for a couple of hours, that means I'm going to be able to get four hours of work done in those two hours, right? Instead of feeling like a guilty parent, whatever it is, you know, your internal life and your internal systems, what do you need to give up? to get where you want to go. So what's old and what's new? That's the way I look at it. What's old and what's new? How can you shift that around? So that's going to require you to do some things, right? So systems, one of the most powerful, powerful ways when you start to really want to get to a high level point of living, you must organize your time. You must organize your time. It, 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 is, it is way up there with personal development and one of the most powerful techniques that you can do is finding an organizational system for you. Now, I am a paper girl. If you saw what was on this desk that you couldn't see right now, you'd be blown away. You'd think, wow, that's the messiest desk ever. But I got this pile of paper to this, to this, to this, to this. That's how my brain works. That's what works for me. Do what works for you, right? I love a paper day timer. You know, I love a paper day timer. There's some amazing um, people that have created some powerful day timers. And for me, that's what I use. One of the most powerful ways for me to time manage and stay on track and wake up with purpose is look at what I need to do tomorrow, tonight before I go to bed, right? That's what works. That's a very powerful thing, checking in with yourself in the morning and checking in with yourself at night and being brutally honest with yourself, right? Being brutally honest with yourself. I'm going to wrap up in the next couple of minutes here. Um, and so when you're writing this, when you're writing this, brain purge down. You're looking at your systems. You're looking at your support. You're looking at your own psychology. You're looking at what you tell yourself and you want to grab onto new and uncomfortable. New and uncomfortable is the words that you're going to start to um, kind of get excited about because when you're comfortable, it's okay to stay somewhere for a while. And then when you get that surge, when you get that urge to move to the next level, then that's when you know you're going to be putting yourself in an uncomfortable state. And I'm going to talk, you know, not just about relationships. When, you know, when you feel like you're stagnant and you need to do something, it's uncomfortable. I'm not just talking about when you're getting to your business. It could be a relationship with your child. It could be um, you want to do, you know, when you're, when you're at a stagnant place, like right now, um, and I, I use myself as an example because I feel like if I'm transparent, you know, it'll, it, everyone becomes human right now. I'm watching myself in a bit of an uncomfortable state. I'm inspired to go back to sw swimming in the ocean. I've been swimming in the ocean for many, many years. Um, it's something that I used to do prior to children. And then I did once or twice, maybe three times a year up until, you know, 10 years of having my kids. And then it just, for whatever reason, didn't call me. And then the water, I was, I've been saying right now, the ocean's been calling me back. And for a month, I've had it on my list get a wetsuit, get a wetsuit, get a wetsuit, right? And I'm observing myself doing what? Not getting a wetsuit, not getting a wetsuit, not getting a wetsuit, right? I went to one store. They didn't have what I wanted for the price, so I'm not doing it. I've got to move that to the top of the list because I saw some people swimming yesterday and I was like, damn, that needs to be me. So when you're having those conversations with yourself and you can hear that, you're like, okay, what's your trip? And if you really discover that, if you put that in a circle and you're like, this is what I'm hearing, what's underneath that? What's underneath that? Then you can write down, it's like, oh, you know, what, what are the excuses that I'm telling myself? And then what's really underneath there? It's like, ooh, well, you know what? Well, maybe I'm scared to go out at six o'clock in the morning and swim by myself. I haven't gone swimming by myself for a long time. It feels uncomfortable. Or you can admit that to yourself and then you're like, okay, I want to do it anyway, right? You're going to do it anyway. Um, I kind of want to wrap up in the sense of, I think what I've given you and what I've hoped to give you is in preparing for greatness, you need to plan. The, the more you plan, the more you become self-observant, the more you hire time management coaches, the more you hire somebody or start following somebody or start reading a book about somebody that's moving in the direction that you want to go, then you energetically move there first. It's kind of like when I used to do treatments for somebody or when someone hires me for coaching. So as soon as they call and they make that appointment for me and hire me for coaching, even though I'm not going to talk to them for a week, their business starts to change the moment they hang up the phone. I swear to you, I've been doing this for a long time. That's exactly what happens. As soon as you buy the book, even though you haven't read the book, you start to change. 
your mindset's changed. You've made a decision. You've acted on the decision. Therefore, it's like the cosmos, the universe, what happens, starts to work with you, starts to work with you, and you start moving in that direction. So the one thing I can share about you is when, it go, when you start to go from a place of where you are in preparing for greatness is it's an uncomfortable feeling. It's an exciting feeling. It's an exhilarating feeling. It makes you feel elated. You start letting go of old. You start engaging with new. You start kind of hanging out in that new mindset, that new tribe. Um, and you plan for it. You plan for it. You time manage it. You rearrange things with people in your life for it. You realize what your limits are and you go get support in those limits, right? And no matter who you're looking at, you know, I look at people that may have something that I want. I recognize where I've come from. Don't forget to look backwards, to know to look forward. Be grateful for where you are. I remember being on the back of the bus and the only thing that I could afford was that book, Living in the Light. And um, just how grateful I was for reading each page. I remember the aha moments when I first read Thinking Go Rich by Napoleon Hill. I probably underlined everything. I remember wanting to do some work on that. I didn't have the money at the time to go and get business coaching. So I got five people together that thought like I did and said, will you guys, there was no workbook for Thinking Go Rich back then. I'm like, will you get together with me once a week and go through this book chapter by chapter? I remember there was no women's networking group. There was no group I could go to. There was a networking group when I started being an entrepreneur in my 20s and it was at nine o'clock on Monday morning. Well, you know, back then, you know, as the mom, I was taking my daughter to school. And so I, I got together, you know, a group of women that I knew wanted to be entrepreneurs. And I'm like, hey, will you guys all come to my house Sunday at two and we can start a networking group? They're like, yeah, and I didn't have a lot of money. So I'm like, okay, I'll supply you know, snacks and food, bring your kids if you want to and drinks. And everybody brought two bucks and threw it into a bowl. And so every Sunday we met, like, you don't have to be, you don't have to have, you don't have to have resources to move your business. You just have to be resourceful. Be resourceful and be honest with yourself. And don't think for a minute that the people that you're looking at, like I was listening to a presentation of a woman yesterday um, who had this business, you know, this business, uh, very, very successful in business, very successful. She's a multi-billionaire and she told her story and I was listening to the grind of her story. And I thought, you know, and I, and I found it inspiring and there was things that I took from what she said and then started to implement those into my plan. And I was listening to what she was saying and I was writing those down and it doesn't matter when you write it down. It's a matter of when you implement, you have to implement it. There's a woman in my business right now. And don't think that she still doesn't have fear. You know, it's like, oh, she has money. She's not fearful. That is the biggest lie. That is the biggest lie. Oh, they're successful in their business. They're not scared anymore. That's not true. It's just absolutely not true. And I, again, I'll be transparent. There's a, there's a woman in my business that um, is probably, I don't know, 10 times my income, <laughs> 10 times my income. And I just kind of like how, this woman is very direct. And if you haven't noticed by now, I, I, I tend to be a little direct. And I kind of like her vibe. And I've watched this woman for, I don't know, six years. And this I made a decision last week that I wanted to kind of shift and move something in my business. And I thought, I'm going to call her and I'm going to ask her if she'll be, you know, what we call in our other business as an accountability partner and just someone who you can talk to once a week and really banter things off of. Now, she's at a way higher level, I'm, you know, and here's the voices in my head. Why would she wanna to talk to me? Why would she wanna spend an hour talking to me? Um, what do I have to offer her? Uh, she's, you know, I'm gauging her based on her income, not her skills, because I don't know them. I have no idea what's going on in her life. Um, she's already super busy. You know, why, all those things that we tell ourselves. and I was like, oh, thank you. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for that thought. Oh, that's okay. So what do I teach? I tell people to do it anyways. And so I shot off a text and I'm like, Hey, I would love to be da, 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 da. Would you be open into having a conversation? Da, 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 da. I introduced myself in case she didn't know who I was and she knew who I was. And she sent a message back. She's like, Oh, absolutely. That sounds awesome. I'm like, okay, let's start, you know, let's start next month. She's like, okay, that's great. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Look at that. So I myself 
you know, even though I've been in business for as long as I have, have those same feelings. So does everybody. So does everybody, right? So no matter where you are and you want to go to that next level of greatness, the biggest thing in going to that biggest, the next level of greatness that people don't do is that they want and they yearn, but they don't plan. They want and they yearn, but they don't plan. They don't get to know themselves enough to know when they're holding themselves back. And so if anything I've ever told, uh, I've talked here is really doing self-explanatory. Like, honestly, go do whatever it takes. And I've done the craziest things, right? If that means going to get, just go dye your hair another color, go dye it another color. One of the most exciting things is when I, <laughs> last year, you know, my hairdresser kind of got funky and I was supposed to put in a color and she forgot and she put it halfway through and it was supposed to be, you know, red and it turned a little pink and so you know i had pink hair from here down a little bit and people were coming up facebook is your hair pink you know but i felt different i felt different i got my hair cut and i changed my hair color i felt different wear something different i don't know go buy something funky you know get rid of stuff like do whatever you need to do sometimes when i feel like i want to be empowered i'm like yeah sister i go paint my hair my nails i go get my nails done a different color that i never do like green like lime green I'm like, that's wicked. You know, I feel like I've just put on a whole different outfit. So go do whatever it is. If you always wear blue and black shirts, go buy a pink one. I'm talking to men here. Go buy a pink one. Go buy a shirt you'd never wear before. Something flowered with a collar and, you know, mother of pearl bracelets or something. Like step out. Like step out. My first business, I'll end with this. I sat with my business coach who I couldn't afford, right? But who I couldn't not afford, right? I had to take the money from something else for sure. And I remember sitting there and she's like, we need to make a mission. Let's make a mission for your company. So make a mission for yourself, right? What's your mission? What's your vision? What's your, what's your path? What's your passion? Where are you going and why, right? And so we really got to the heart. We spent two hours in a brainstorming session, purging and puking, we call it, on a page just like this to find out who, what it is that I really wanted to do? Who was I and what did I want to do? And what I came up with is something that I still talk about today and still live by today. And I'm talking over 20 years. And it's like, I, like my mission was that I inspire and motivate people to stand up, show up, and speak up in their business and personal lives. So that mission can cover everything I do. It can cover how I parent. It can cover how I am in relationship. It can cover how I show up in my friendships. If I'm here to inspire and empower people to show up, stand up, and speak up in their business and personal lives, which is why when someone's like, yeah, hey, you're kind of like Janice Joplin, I'm like, perfect. I'm actually getting a message. In their business and personal lives, if that's what I'm really here to do, if that's my mission and my mandate, that one, I have to do that. And two, that leads a path of where I need to go. So find out what that is, start purging and just start moving in that next direction. And the world's your oyster. So congratulations on getting to your next level of greatness. Um, I'd love to hear feedback from people. So please feel able to do. Um, continue to join me on this with these lectures and these journeys. There's about if you go to devdrummond.com, you'll see it actually is listed a lot in the women in women lectures, the women in business lectures, but they're not just applicable for women. I just happen to do a lot in that sector. Um, clearly, there's men on the call. And if there's a lecture that you want to see get thrown out there um, every month that I do these complimentary, then just send it to me. So anyways, thank you for being with me today. We're going to stop the recording. And then if anyone has any immediate questions, so oh, I've taken you full hour today. Now I do 35 minutes. Um, then we'll take the recording.